Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. In this video, I'm going to solve several homework exercises for Calculus 1 students on the section covering the limit of a function. If you have not yet watched the video lecture explaining the content in this section, I'll link it right here. But let's just jump into getting some homework done. So first question, explain in your own words what is meant by the equation the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x equals 5. Basically, you need to start getting comfortable with this notation and interpreting in your brain what exactly it's telling you. There's a lot going on. Underneath the limit, that's what the x value is approaching. So on your graph, as x values get close to 2, f of x, y values get close to 5. So you could think about it like this, as x gets close to 2, gets close to 2, f of x or y values get close to 5. Okay, how we define close will do very precisely later on in the chapter. Second part says, is it possible for this statement to be true and yet f of 2, so the function value at 2 is 3? Explain. Well, yes, this would be possible. Let me show you just a quick sketch so you see how it would be possible. So remember, the limit of a function tells you what the graph is tending towards as you approach a certain value, but it does not tell you exactly what the graph is equal to at that point. So if the limit of f of x is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. I don't know what the rest of the graph looks like, but I know that as I approach 2 from either side, from the left or from the right, the graph is getting close to 5. So that would be in this vicinity right here. So I'm going to draw a situation where the limit is 5, but that's not what the function value is. See, I don't know what's going on on either side, but you can imagine if you're walking on the graph, as you get closer and closer to 2 in the x direction, your y value where you're standing at approaches 5. Yet, they want f of 2 to equal 3. So what would happen is you'd have a hole, and then you would have the function value filled in right there. f of 2 is 3. So yes, it's possible if you have a hole in your graph at 2, 5, where the limit is, but f of x is defined such that f of 2 equals 3. Okay? So that's how that would be possible. Good. Next exercise, explain the meaning of each of the following. So first one, the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x equals positive infinity. So notice in this case, they didn't tell us from which side we were approaching negative 3. So what that means is, as you approach from either side, left or right, here's negative 3, the graph approaches positive infinity. It gets very, very large in the positive direction. So it would look something like this from both sides. What's going on away from negative 3? I don't know. Okay. So if you're going to explain in words, I think a graph is better than any sort of sentence you could write. I mean, we're in math class, but anyways, we can say that this means f of x can be made as large as we want by taking x close enough to negative 3. So let's think about what that means. Say I told you, oh, I need f of x, I need y to be 100. Could you, could you make that happen? You'd be like, oh yeah, well, you just gotta, you know, stand right here and then y will be 100. And what if I say, no, 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 I need it to be 1,000. Okay, no problem, just scoot a bit closer to negative 3, it'll be 1,000. What if I want it to be a million? And you see, this can go on forever. As large as you want to make f of x, you just have to get that much closer to negative 3 from either side, from either side. Okay, similarly, part B, the limit as x approaches 4 from the right 
of f of x is negative infinity. So notice this is a one-sided limit just from the right side of 4. So we don't know what's going on on the left side of 4, basically. We only have half the picture. 1, 2, 3, 4. So from the right side of 4, remember this means we have a vertical asymptote there, the graph is approaching negative infinity, like this. Whatever else is going on, I don't have information about. But same thing, this means f of x can be made as, lar as, as largely negative. <laughs> um, as, I'm just going to write that, that makes sense in my head, as largely negative as we want by taking x close enough to 4, but you have to come from the right side of 4, yes? So you could say um, through values larger than 4 or from the right side of 4. Larger than four. Okay. Now that part's done with. I never like explaining too much, but it is necessary. Okay. Fun part. For the function f whose graph is given, state the value of each quantity if it exists. If it does not exist, explain why. Okay. 5a, the limit as x approaches 1. So where is 1? One? 1 is right there. What is the limit as x approaches 1 of the function? So they didn't tell us from which side. So you're just going to imagine you're walking on the graph from the left side of 1. It looks like the y value is approaching 2. Is that the same from the right side of 1? It is. So that's our limit. The limit as x approaches 1 of f of x equals 2. All right, part B says the limit as x approaches 3. This little minus sign here means from the left of f of x. So here's 3, but we're coming from the left. So imagine you're walking on the graph. Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. What y value are you approaching? You're approaching 1. Now, I know there's an open circle there, but that doesn't matter when we're talking about the limit. The limit is what you're tending toward, not necessarily what the graph is equal to at that point. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is 1. And then notice in part C, now they want us to do the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. So here's 3, but if we're coming from the right side of 3, we're coming this way along the graph. Do -de -do -de -do. And where are you tending towards? What y value are you heading towards? 4. Okay. So this limit is equal to 4. Now for part D, it asks for the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. This is a two-sided limit because notice here they didn't specify if it was from the left or from the right. And remember, this two-sided limit only exists if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. So look how nice. We already found the left-hand and right-hand limits in parts B and C. And now we just have to check, are these equal? No, most definitely not. So that means the two-sided limit as x approaches 3 of f of x does not exist. You guys, I do get very picky with my students. <laughs> Don't put equals does not exist. It doesn't equal anything. It does not exist. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have some self-control and precision when you do your math. Okay, and then last part, E wants f of 3. So it wants the function value at 3. Doesn't care what the limit is. At 3, how is our function defined? Well, look, you see this lonely closed circle? That's what the function's defined to be, not the open circles, right? So this is equal to 3. Voila. Fun, no? I like these ones. Okay, let's try another. For the function g whose graph is given, state the value of each quantity if it exists, and then if it does not exist, explain why. Okay. Were we supposed to explain earlier for the last one? Let me check. Oh, explain why. Let me explain. You just go like this. The limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x does not equal the limit as x approaches 3 from the left. That's explaining. You know, if you're in my class, I'll tell you. 
write out something mathematically. Don't write me a paragraph. When it says explain, you don't need to go into English class mode, okay? All right, here we go. First one, limit as t approaches zero from the left of, this is g of t, this function here. Zero from the left. So you always got to find, okay, here's my t axis. Here's where t equals zero, but we're coming from the left. So we're coming this way. What's the limit? The graph is tending towards negative one. Now we got to check from the right. Okay, so we're coming this way. The graph is tending towards ooh, negative two. Stay there, negative two. And then C wants the limit, the two-sided limit as T approaches zero. So again, we just found the limit from the left and the limit from the right, and they're not equal. No, they are not. So we can say this limit does not exist because limit as T approaches zero from the left of G of T does not equal the limit as T approaches zero from the right. Of G of T. Get used to that notation. Okay, part D. Limit as T approaches 2 from the left. So here's 2. 2 from the left is heading towards 2. Okay. 2 from the right. Where are we going? 2 from the right, it's going to 0. And now the limit as t approaches 2, again, it doesn't exist. Limit from the left doesn't equal the limit from the right. This is for 2, though. This time the limit as t approaches 2 from the left of g of t does not equal the limit as t approaches 2 from the right of g of t. Okay. What is g of 2? So for part g, they just want the function value at 2. Do you see it? Right here. g of 2 is equal to 1. What is the limit as t approaches 4 for g of t? So notice here they didn't tell me which side. So you have to check both before you can answer this question. So here's 4. If we approach from the left of 4, the function is approaching 3. If we approach from the right of 4, same thing. So we're good to go. The limit as t approaches 4 of g of t equals 3. Hmm, okay, nice. Beautiful. One more. To see the full-length video, you'll need to join my Patreon. There's two memberships. For just $9.99 a month, you can have access to all of the exclusive video content I create. And if you would like some voting power to request what content in particular, then you can join the Superstar Pupil Package for $49.99 a month. Happy studying!